Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Community Bookstore and Stephen Savage. But <laughs> <laughs> hello. Hi. Um, we are here to introduce the new book. Oh, along it. came hope and then came hope. It's there it is. Then it and hope. then came hope. Yeah, and you have is, to hold it just right. Just right, or it blends in the, with the background. Or it disappears, yeah. Is Hope, in classic ship sense, a she? She is. She yes. Is. Yes. Um, yeah, we wanted her to be, I mean, it fit with the convention, but also it was nice that she was a she. We imagined her to be, you know, a, a, a female doctor. And I would say most of my doctors right now are, are women. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I should get some logistics out of the way. This yeah. is community bookstore. Uh, we are what we have the book on sale. This is a usual kind of presentation where Stephen will probably read from the book, and afterwards we'll do some sort of demonstration, probably drawing rather than handstands because that doesn't work so well on Zoom. And uh, exactly. <laughs> and then we will open it up for questions if you have any, and yeah. then we'll all be on our merry ways. Great. So over Great. to you, Stephen. All right. Thanks so much, Philip. And I'm, you know, you get, you know, you guys are my favorite local bookstore. You are my go-to bookstore when I. Yeah, yeah. You're right Yay. up the hill. I just go up. I just go up the hill, take a left, and you're right there, and you have the book that I want. So I and I can't wait to get back in and to see, um, to do, you know, another event, another live event. But in the meantime, we'll all meet here in Zoom. But I encourage everybody to, um, certainly everybody in Park Slope to go visit community because those guys and, and girls are great at that bookstore. But listen, I wanna share with you my newest book and I've brought a number of books to um, community bookstore to share. I'll show you some of them. Um, yeah, the new book is called And Then Came Hope, of course. And I'm gonna, read part of the book and then I'm going to share some of the story of the book because it's actually got an interesting little backstory. I was inspired by a real ship called the SS Hope and I'll tell you about them uh, in just a sec. Um, I want to give a big shout out to my publisher Holiday House and Neil Porter, the publishers of the book. And that is actually Mr. Porter there at the bottom with his captain captain's hat on. And then my um, art director Jennifer and the three of us would meet, you know, we did this book during lockdown. So we would meet um, during, we would have Zooms and we would work on the book the way everybody was working, um, the way a lot of people were working, unless you had to, unless you were an essential worker and you needed to go out and be outside. Um, big shout out also to Project Hope and I'll, um, I'll explain who they are. They, they are the, um, the medical organization that has followed in the footsteps of the ship. And I'll, I'll get into that in a, in a sec, but if, if anyone from Project Hope is listening, big, huge shout out. They've been big supporters of the book. So as I was saying, I was inspired by a real hospital ship um, called the SS Hope. And this is not the SS Hope. This is actually the USNS Comfort, which is a um, Navy hospital ship that steamed into New York Harbor last it was actually March 30th when it came into the harbor. And I'm a huge ship aficionado fan. And I also like, um, I've done a number of vehicle books. I did a book called Super Truck and Little Tugs. I love ships and things that go. And I had to, I decided I had to um, head over to, Hudson, to the Hudson River docks and check out the USNS Comfort. And a light bulb went off and I thought, hmm, maybe it's time for me to do a ship, a hospital ship book. And I did some, oh, so I was mentioning I've done a number of vehicle books, um, actually for my good friend, Neil Porter. And uh, yeah, I thought maybe it's time to do a hospital ship. I had that light bulb moment. I thought that might make a nice, and also, you know, we were in lockdown and, and the, we were all thinking about the pandemic and thinking about who the real heroes of the moment were and still are doctors and nurses and paramedics and first responders. And so I thought of this as a good, good chance to give a shout out to those, to those healthcare heroes. Let me, I'll share a little bit of the, the book with you. Um, begins, the boats in the harbor weren't feeling well. First, barge got bonked. 
And if you want, if you're listening out there and you want to have something bonk your head, you can just, oh, that hurts. The submarine started shivering. Now, I remember last time I was shivering, which was about a year ago. I'm not sure if I had COVID-19 or not, but I had something and I was very cold and I was shivering. So I decided to put that in the book. And I also felt feverish at the same time. So I put that also in the book. The, the fairy felt feverish. She was steaming. Aircraft carrier coughed. You ready, everybody? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. And little Dory's nose was dripping. She needed to see the doctor. So you can see we have very big boats and then we've got the smallest boat in the harbor, little Dory. They're all not feeling well. So they put out the call and you may recognize those letters S-O-S. That means please help. And then came Hope. So Hope is there outside of the bridge and she sees those uh, SOS letters and steams into the harbor. And you'll have to pick up the book or check it out to see what happens, but you can guess that she goes and rescues all of those ailing ships in the harbor because she is the hero hospital ship, the SS Hope. So the SS Hope was a real ship. So I saw the Comfort, the USNS Comfort, and then I started doing some research and found an even more cool ship called the, called the the SS Hope, and it was a peacetime hospital ship that had these the word hope painted right on the side. And I love that because I'm a big type guy. So it was a floating hospital ship. It's not, doesn't it, it's been decommissioned, retired, doesn't exist anymore. Um, but it was a it was a white hospital ship the way they often are. And it was a floating hospital, had doctors and nurses on board. Little factoid that you can share with your friends. Julia Louis Dreyfus, the actress, was on board as a child because her stepfather was a physician. So that was pretty cool. So I, I really enjoyed getting to know the ship and getting to know its amazing history. And the word hope, we love, I love the word hope. You can't beat that word. And we all need hope right now. But hope is actually in, in the context of the ship is an acronym, health opportunities for people everywhere. And what you're looking at here is a milk carton that the um, ship, the ship produced milk. It had a big milk making machine on board called the Iron Cow and it would steam into a harbor. It would go to Indonesia or or Nicaragua or some port of call where people <clears throat> needed its help. And a lot of times it would give out these cartons of milk to kids. So, and then the last slide I wanna show is, you know, I can relate to a hospital ship and I can relate and really appreciate healthcare workers because whenever I get sick, or this is my daughter, Chloe, who broke her arm um, several times when she was little because she's a kid, she was running around, she broke her arm and I was so worried and we took her to the doctor and the doctors took care of it. So I tell everybody, don't worry. If you get sick, the SS Hope will come rescue you. Or if the, if the Hope is busy, your physician, your paramedic, your doctor will come and everything will be okay. And uh, yeah, that's a little bit about the ship. And I thought I could, because I am an illustrator, I've got to share with you a drawing. <clears throat> um, let me find my, I'm gonna do a digital drawing. I don't know if you've ever, any of you have ever seen this, but um, let me, one second here. Let's see. Oh, here we are. I got it. All right. Um, let's start with a blank canvas here. Um, if you would, if you are interested in how to draw a ship, you know, you don't need me to tell you how to draw a ship. It's one of the easiest things to draw in the world, right? You just have to do that little thing. Philip, do you know how to draw ships? Are you an expert ship drawer? I, I know am that Philip can draw. He's a I'm great limer. I'm an inexpert ship yeah. drawer. But you are. I, well, I get, you know, I think it's kind of like ship. If, if someone asks you to draw a birthday cake, you're not going to get all bent out of shape. You're going to be like, oh, I can do that. It's kind of like a birthday cake. You just got to do these different layers, right? That's the whole, 
you know, when I when I think about drawing, I think about what's the basic idea. And the basic idea of a ship is layers stacked on top of each other. Um, so you can see here, this is an amazing, this is the most amazing ship drawing you've ever seen. Um, it is. The only thing that I needed to do when I knew I had to do the cover is you don't want to see the side of the ship. You want to see a ship's face. So I know knew that all I needed to do was basically draw the ship um, with its with its front facing us. So then you have to get into a little bit of this stuff, a little bit of what they call perspective. And then, wow, isn't that an amazing ship? Wow. It's a beautiful ship. Hope looks a little like a little forlorn there. Um, the trick with, with working on her was making sure that she looked very content and also very capable at the same time. So um, that's my very, very quick drawing. And you all know I'm using a stylus here, if you can all see it here. That's my drawing tool. It's a, called a wake, it's a electronic stylus. And then this is my, this is what I'm actually drawing on. I'm gonna hold it in a way that you can see it. It's a black tablet right there. It's called a Wacom tablet. And um, the wonderful thing about digital drawing, two things you can always erase, but you can also do this fill thing, which is really fun. Just like that. Whoa. Yeah, and that, when I was a kid, when I used to use, and I'm not, I'm not dissing on pens and paper, but if I had to color all this in, I'd, I'd be here all night doing it. But the pen allows you to do things like, you know, write to create white lines over dark, which would be really, really hard because you'd have to do a lot of coloring of the background. Um, so that's my very, very quick ship. Um, and I'm happy if anyone's out there to um, to draw a ship or draw a favorite animal, or I might even have to ask Philip because I know he's got his favorite animal. You um, may have to ask me. Well, yeah. before you before yeah. you draw, I was noticing that SOS has your initials on the outside. Yes, all we need again. is that your SOS is Stephen Savage. If your middle name were Oliver or Otto, it's not, is it? It's not. It's ah. actually. It is actually. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. I'll draw it for you. Can you, am I still screen sharing here or no? No. Oh, let me do that. I don't need to draw it for, I'll just tell you what it is. It's SAS, which is actually Scandinavia oh. Airlines. Yes, air service. Scan, yes, exactly. Um, but uh, I never really thought about that, but you know, it would make sense if my initials were SOS because I always feel like I'm in distress and I always need someone to come rescue me. So I might want to just go ahead and change it. My middle name from Andrew. I'm not crazy about Oliver. No offense to Oliver's out there, but maybe um, Orville. Orville's a good one. Okay. Yes. Even Orville Savage. Let's do Old it right school. now. Is yeah. It? Yeah. <laughs> so, but you wanted a favorite animal. Yeah. What's I your favorite say, animal? Um, it depends on the time, but I am a fan of ducks. You're you're a fan of ducks. I like ducks, ducks and chickens. Know, I didn't know this about you. I really. No, about I feel, you. I felt pressured. I was thinking water, but if I really have to, I, donkeys I like yeah. a lot and goats. Donkeys, you know, are great. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny. You know what I think of when I think of when I think of a duck. I heard a story once. I gosh, I, I and and I'm the story is just popping in my head, so I don't know the origin of the story. But it was um, it was a quote from a Japanese artist who was like in his 80s or something. I don't know if he was. An, I don't know if it was Hiroshige or one of those old wood woodblock artists. Mm -hmm. But he had said that he didn't know how to really draw a duck until he was in his 80s. And somebody said, "You've been an artist for the last 60 years. What you, you've always been drawing ducks." And he said. 
Yeah, I was always doing kind of like an impression of a duck, but it wasn't until I was 80 that I could do like, I could draw it and it was a duck. It was com a com completely the essence of duck. It wow. took me 60 years. It's a very, very sort of Japanese concept. It's like mastering something like a duck takes 60 years before you, before it's the perfect duck and it's not just your impression of a duck, you know? So it's kind of, a, it's almost like a Jedi thing or something, but this is, this is not actually a duck. So this is like a duck ship, I think. It really, yeah. the back here doesn't really look like, so why don't we just take that idea here uh, a little further and it will be like a gigantic, Yes. Instead of a Trojan horse, it's like a Trojan duck that is sailing. And remember my eraser tool. I want to, I want to, or maybe I'll use this one. And you know what they say? They say, Beautiful. they say the happy accident is what, is what get, gets you to that, you know, strange new in artistic invention. Let's put yeah. a little railing on here. I love it. And maybe it's a little bit, he's a little bit more fierce now. Yes. Fierce. Yes. Failing ship. We probably could use some scale um, if we really wanted to, um, to really push that into a giant ship, or maybe it's like a small sort of like a bathtub toy. <laughs> um, But um, let me fix that. And then, you know, what you can do is, what's always fun is you can do, if you, it's, I don't know how um, Bob Ross did it. We're talking and drawing. It's like two parts of the, two different parts of the brain. It's very, very hard to do. It's like when you're driving and someone wants you to have a conversation and you're, yeah. You can't, you're like, I got to get through this intersection before I answer that question. And it's a little bit that way. I have a feeling you may be a little more stuck than Bob Ross because you have to interact with your computer so much to change. You, you're That's not just true. using one, one brush and one bit of uh, oil paint. That's a very, very good point. You're not just using your hands. You're actually having to work the machine too. A little bit like driving where you're having to like, where's the turning signal and all that. There's my duck. I don't know if you want, if that was what you were thinking, like a duck ship, but. Uh, it's like you were reading my mind. That's exactly what I was thinking. A duck so ship with two sails. Yes. Um, and let's call this, let's really call this. Let's call this. Let's call this. We'll call it, it'll be a book cover. All right. Oh, yes. We'll <laughs> fills um fills bath time fills bath time i can sense it now i didn't want to go but now that the duck is taking over i get all shriveled in the tub yeah you're gonna bring back um bath taking for for adult men i think yes you know, shower was fine, but now you're at that shower point. Was good. Where... No, yeah. Well, you can't play with duck ships in the shower. You can't. You can't play at all, really, in the shower. And that's one no. of the things that really is missing from the shower experience. So there we have it. There we have that's. And so I will frame this. She clay print, send it to you. You'll have it in three days. All right. Yes. A mug. Yeah. $4.50. Perfect. That, that's all. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, do well, you, do you sail or have no, you done no. that kind of thing? It's funny. Somebody asked me the, cause now I've done two, mm -hmm. uh, boat books. I did little tug. Now I did this and I love boats, but I'm actually not great on the water. So you like I'm, watching them. I like watching them and I'd be fine out in the Harbor, but as soon as we go through the Verrazano Narrows bridge and I'm out in the swells, I'm not mm -hmm. great in the swells. I remember the last time I had to take a ferry. I was in Maine and I had to take a ferry from the mainland to a, to an island and mm -hmm. I started to get a little bit wavy. Um, so that's why, yeah. And I'm actually um, not, if, if it gets bumpy on the airplane too, and I'm the same way, 
So I need to be on a very, very even ship and an even airplane um, or just stay on land and stay in my studio and draw things. That's probably <laughs> the best thing. But, uh, but I love ships. I think they're absolutely amazing. When I was a kid, I used to draw, I used to build models of ships. I was into, you know, there was an aircraft carrier model that I did. I think it was like the Enterprise. And then I also um, loved the USS Constitution, that old sailing ship. Um, so, were, these the, were these the plastic kits that you then yeah, used the glue? Yeah, plastic or? Okay. kits with the glue. Yeah. Yep. So, but something about the, you know, the scale of them and all the little details and just the, you know, they're like castles. They're like these, they're kind of floating castles. This so, event's about um, you, not me, but so, I, yeah, I was, had one, sorry, I had one that was like a sailing ship and the threads took forever because yeah. uh, it, the rigging, there is no way I, I had to give up. There is way yeah. too much rigging. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how I, I, I I'm like kids these days i don't think they would i don't know if they would have the patience to do that because like you have to to get to the end of your model kit requires that you stick with it for several weeks and yeah it's easy to to make mistakes but um yeah and i also did um i also painted ships as a kid too so i have a painting Ooh. i have it somewhere i have it i i think i have it on my website i have a painting of the uh monitor and the merrimack the to save the ironclads from the Civil War and they're fighting. Uh -huh. Nice. Uh, yeah, and I did that actually for extra credit in a history class because I was not doing well in the class. And then the teacher said, if you want to pass the class, you could do a painting. So he kind of refocused my efforts, which was kind of smart of him to do that. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's almost like my new book is just kind of a continuation of doing extra credit for teachers, trying to, uh, <laughs> trying to, uh, I mean, the, the story of, um, you know, the story of the hospital ship is actually pretty interesting. And I've gotten to know the, or, so I, I don't, I didn't finish telling the story about Project Hope. So the sh ship was decommissioned and now uh, the, they took the name of the ship and now this organization is called Project Hope. And it's kind of a, you know, it's a, a medical aid organization and they, um, have been helping out during the pandemic and in a lot they're posting all kinds of things on social media about their efforts in india right now and whenever there's a crisis when there was a huge crisis in beirut recently and they were there so um so it's been great to get to know them they've been very supportive of the of the book and um they're very interested in child wellness and and um helping young mothers around the world um, and, and, and helping with uh, neonatal wellness. And, uh, and so I've gotten to know them and it's been great getting to know them and, and sort of feeling like I've partnered with them and um, very, really admire them and really admire all the doctors and nurses I know who are in my life and have been taking care of us during this really tough time. So maybe in my next life, I'll be a doctor. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, um, so, uh, so yeah, this book is a little bit different from some of the other ones. Super Truck was based on a garbage truck, but there's a real, this, this ship has a real history. So that has been a lot of fun. And um, it's been great hanging out with everybody and great to talk to you, Phil. And I really appreciate, um, I can't wait to pop back up into the bookstore and hang out with you guys again. Yeah, can't wait to not see just, you again. Yeah, not just Zoom. We need to have like we need to have a proper um, event. So I'll be I'll yeah. be ready. I'll be ready. I have an, I have a book coming out next year. So maybe we yeah. can do that one in the book. We'll be there. Yeah, yeah, we'll wear costumes. We can wear whatever whatever we hey, need we'll to. We'll do whatever. Whatever. It takes. I, I didn't have my hospital nurse uniform. I didn't know what they were. Yeah. The the ship ship hospital crew. I didn't think about that. That might be nice. So if we had had a, like an opening, we could have had everyone dressed in scrubs. White, or, yeah. <laughs> or scrubs. Yeah, that would <laughs> be fun. That would have been great. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Well, if so you stop you, screen you have, sharing. Oh, yeah. Are you happy with the with your um, duck ship? I, I am. I am very happy with the duck ship. I yeah. like that you made it. I think it there's something there. I think that could be. Hey, listen, is it if this turns into. Huh? Yeah, it is correct. He's seasick like me, maybe. Maybe that's <laughs> going on. That's so, even better. A seasick yeah. duck ship. Yeah. Very cool.
Um, well, it's been fun hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for sharing your book with us. Sure. It yeah. Is, it is very lovely. Yeah. And thank you very much. The, the way you use light in it, even because you're very minimal with the elements you have. Yes. And it, it's just it turns out really well every time. I wanted to share before we go, I wanted to show you one thing here. I'm just taking off my virtual background here. One more thing. Yeah. One more thing. Um, the book okay. actually has at the uh -huh. end, and this is might be fun for parents and librarians. The history that I was just talking about is, yes. is on the last page. There's a little afterward, which is something that you don't always see in picture books. So it's got the fun story, but then it actually has the the, the history there, and you can see, you can it, there it is docked mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, and you can see the little suspension bridge there. So Very cool. Yeah. So you can so the older kids can learn a little bit about the ship. <clears throat> as they read the book to their siblings, young to their kids. young brothers and sisters or whoever. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Well, thank you so much, right. Stephen. Thank you. It was great. It was great hanging out and we'll, we'll, we'll talk soon. And I appreciate yes. everybody um, listening and you guys all get down to community bookstore and get, 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 get yourself some summer reading, please. And get yes. a copy of hope. Yeah. Yeah. Thank cool. you, Stephen. All right. We'll, Thanks we'll so see you much. soon. Okay. Thank see you. you later. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.